What's up guys, my name is Mark Steiner and today I'm going to teach you how to do a day to night color grade. This is such a cool color grade and really opens up a lot of shooting options for you if you wanna get that cool nighttime look but don't want to actually shoot at night. This is actually a really common practice in the filmmaking industry You've probably seen it before. Honestly, the one that I'm thinking of right now is House of the Dragon. That entire scene was shot in broad daylight and then they color graded it to look like it was nighttime. And I'm gonna teach you how to do the exact same thing. So let's get right into it. Now that we're on the laptop, let's get right into it. The first thing I'm gonna do is go down to the settings tab right here, go to my color management and go to DaVinci YRGB, go to DaVinci WG slash intermediate and have my output color space at Rec. 709A because I am using a Mac and Rec. 709A is just what Apple devices like. If you're not on an Apple device, I'd recommend using Rec. 709. Now that that's done, we're just gonna hit save and seeing as I already have this set up, I'm gonna hit cancel and now we can begin. Now that we have our color space managed, we can get into the actual color grading. So the first thing I'm gonna do is make another node and I'm going to hit Option S on Mac or Alt S on PC and I'm just gonna create a new node. And what I'm gonna do to both of these nodes is have a color space transform on both of these. So I'm just gonna drop that on in both and we're gonna go to the first one. This was shot using Sony S-Log3 dot Cine. So that is what I'm going to input right here. If you're using a different camera, you are going to use a different color input space. And if you're using a camera that doesn't have log or whatever, you can just leave this as Rec. 709 because that'll be absolutely fine. But because I did shoot this in Sony S-Log3, I'm going to convert this in the best way possible using these things. My output color space now is going to be DaVinci wide gamut and I'm going to do DaVinci intermediate as the thing so you can see that is changed already then we're going to come to the end node right here and we're going to do the exact opposite of what we just did and we're gonna have the input color space as DaVinci wide gamut and we're going to have the input gamma as DaVinci intermediate we're going to go to our output color space and we're gonna hit rec 709 and then we're going to do rec 709 a because I'm on Mac for you that's probably rec 709 now that we're good on that we can just leave that as is and voila, we have now turned S-Log3 into a color managed Rec. 709 that looks pretty good. This is what the footage looks like with a basic Rec. 709 color grade and that is what we're working with right now. This is the before and the after. We got some contrast, we got some color, we got some good lighting, but the magic that we're here for is the day to night color grade transformation and this is going to be a special one so let's get right into it i'm not going to do anything else with these two nodes they have served their purpose i'm not going to touch them again throughout this entire video this is all they need to do we have our input we have our output so i'm just going to move on to the next node so on this node this is where we can start to really get the day to night color grade going and what i'm going to do is come down to my color wheels and my primaries and this is where the magic happens you might be looking at this and be like wow this is pretty sunset golden hour daylight how are we going to make this look like nighttime? I will show you. So we're going to come down. First things first, we're going to go to our offset. And this is practically the equivalent of overall exposure if you're coming from the photography world. And this is what I'm going to do. I'm just going to drag this really down, like really, really down. And already we're looking a lot darker, maybe not golden hour, maybe like dusk. And that's helping things a lot. And then the next thing I'm going to do is come down to my highlights and bring that down a little bit. And then I'm going to come to my midtones and just kind of play with that. And then my shadows, just bring that down ever so slightly. So we have a little bit of stuff going on here and already before, after way darker, way, way darker. Obviously still not looking that nighttime vibe, but you can already see in the shadows, we're getting a bit of that blue, which is really, really good. So first thing I'm going to do is come to my offset and just really bring this to the blue side. Now, this is looking pretty good. This is helping that nighttime vibe. It still doesn't look completely there, but we look really, really good. And then the next thing I'm gonna do is kind of play with my highlights and see how that works. Obviously, we don't wanna go too crazy with this kind of stuff, but I am just gonna smidgen that to the bluer side in the highlights. And then in the midtones, I'm gonna just kind of come down to the more cyan, and that is going to help things drastically. And then with shadows, usually this is a bit overpowering, but I'm going to also move this a bit to the cyan side. We have this to this. 
And now we're looking a lot more like nighttime. So what else am I gonna do? I think I'm going to come to my contrast and I'm just gonna bring this down a little bit so we can brighten up kind of those shadowy areas. And then I'm going to do my pivot and kind of change that depending on what I want. So I'm gonna bring my pivot a little bit lower and then I'm gonna bring my midtone detail to 12 because that's the number I usually like using when it comes to these sorts of things. And then I'm gonna mess with my highlights and whatnot here and see how I wanna play with that. Do I wanna bring down the highlights, soften those up, probably bring that to like minus 27-ish and then shadows, I'm going to do up and down, up and down, up and down. And how much I want to crush them versus not. I'm going to bring them up a tiny bit. And then to compensate for that, I'm going to bring the darks, the shadows, the blacks down a little bit more to there. And then because I like my color, I'm going to bring this up quite a bit. And it also recovers quite a bit in the skin tones here, which I really, really like. And I think I'm just going to dial that in to around five because we get some nice skin tone recovery and those blues are shining through real nice. So this is again, before, after. This is all on one node, just using the primaries. Look how much of a difference we've made in just such a short period of time. Now, I think we're still looking a little bit too golden in some of these areas, especially in the skin tones. So what I'm gonna do is just going to bring down the color temperature ever so slightly, maybe like minus 120. And I think that gets us a little bit bluer to where we wanna be. And then I'm going to play with the overall exposure a little bit more to see how dark I can push it without it going crazy. And I think we're getting pretty contrasty here in the darker areas. So what I'm gonna do is just kind of lower the contrast and see if I can kind of make up for that. And then also I'm going to go to my tone curve here because this is super, super powerful. So what the first thing I'm gonna do is go to here and just set a new point and then I'm going to play with the highlights and whatnot here. Obviously we are kind of pushing things to the extreme and so I'm just going to kind of like fade that up and yeah we're just kind of playing with different things here to see how this works. I think that looks good. I think this helps a bit in the highlights. If we zoom in here, a lot of the highlights are showing up on the dress here. So these white areas are being affected the most. So I'm just going to kind of tone this up to kind of clean that up a little bit. And then if I move this, you can see how much we're pushing the image and we're kind of breaking it right here. So what I'm going to do is just kind of bring this down a little bit, soften things up. And I'm just going to continue playing with this little dot right here to see where things look best. And if I can just continue to kind of play with all of this and I want to see how it affects my image as a whole, we're really removing contrast and putting contrast back in. So if I get rid of that dot, I want to remove a little bit of contrast and soften up the highlights. Now I think it's starting to really look more like nighttime or dusk or something on that bluer side. So what I want to do now is kind of just lower that a little bit more in the midtones and shadows. And now we look really, really good. And that was just all with the tone curve and primaries. So now that we're here, I'm just going to kind of play through my clip and see what I like. I think the lighting here is still a little bit too on the warm side. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to decrease the saturation just a little bit and see like if I can get things looking a little bit more like nighttime. And then I'm going to increase shadows a little bit more, maybe like eight. And I think then that the highlights need to be a little bit on the bluer side. So I'm just going to kind of dial this in. I'm going to look at her face real quick quick because I want to see we we are obviously getting a lot of like that golden skin tone and I just kind of want to bring a little bit more blue into that instead of golden hour because I want to mimic that like moonlight type look so if we can kind of negate the warm light on her and make it look a little cooler that looks a lot better to my eye. So now golden hour versus nighttime. I think we're looking really, really good here. So I'm really happy with how this is coming out. We have some nice cool lighting on her now. It does look like moonlight. It doesn't look like warm light and the beach looks like it is at nighttime, but we look properly lit and it doesn't look awful beyond compare. So I think this is a very believable nighttime look. I'm going to make a new node now and we're going to go back to our primaries here and we're going to go to our log wheels right here. And this is where I can dial in a little bit more things here, especially focusing on the highlights and the white in the dress. I kind of want to emphasize the more blue look here, but since we have done so much work on the highlights and the tone curve and whatnot, a lot of this isn't going to be affecting um, the same as it normally would on a regular color grade. So I'm just going to kind of push this to the max and seeing what I can get out of this. And it seems like the highlights aren't being affected that much as I push this like crazy. So what I'm going to do here is just bring this way up to see if the highlights are being affected by anything. And I think we've basically 
eliminated highlights from this with our previous node. So I'm going to leave highlights completely done right now. And I'm going to go to our midtones, which might be showing up. And as you can see, instantly, this is showing up more as midtones. So this is where I can dial in a lot more of that blue, cooler moonlight look. So I'm going to reset this right here and I'm going to come in and add in some blue. And you can see that white is changing quite drastically. We're getting rid of the remaining warmth of that. And you can see if I push it to the extreme, it's really showing up in the skin tones and the pearls and anything on the lighter end of stuff here. Let's just focus on the white dress here. We're going to reset that. There's still hints of warmer light. So we're just going to kind of push this more to the blue. And I think there is when things start to disappear. I don't want to affect the skin tones too drastically. But again, the skin tone should reflect the more nighttime, dark, cooler nature of this. So it's OK if the skin tones aren't perfectly balanced as they should be in a daylight shot because they reflect the ambient nature of what nighttime is supposed to look like, at least in cinema. So now if I want to push or pull this, you can kind of see if I pull it, it looks a little bit too desaturated. But then if I push it, we've crushed the image and it just looks bad. So I'm just going to kind of pull this off a little bit and cool it off just a, just a tad to, again, just limit those highlights. And we're looking pretty good. If I do the before and after, it's just that little bit more blue. So it takes away a little bit of that warmth, which I really, really like. And then if we really want to push the shadows, we can kind of just play with this. And because this image has been crushed so much now, everything is basically showing up as a shadow. So we don't want to do too much with the shadows here because it can really impact our entire image. But if I just pull this a little bit more to the blue side, like nothing crazy, but just a little smidgen, you can see how much of an impact that is having on skin tones and the overall image. So I'm just going to little bit, little bit to the blue. So it's gone plus 01 and plus minus 01 here on the red. And if we just do before, after we've just taken a little bit more red out of the skin tone so it like again makes it more believable that it is nighttime so if i just zoom out here again subtle subtle differences that bring that warmth out of the skin tones and the whites and make it more cooler which i think looks really really good so now that we've done that on that node i'm going to make a new node and i'm going to make this node the sharpening node so if we zoom a lot in here you can see there's quite a bit of detail here it's not bad but i just like a little bit more sharpness so i'm going to bring this down to 0.47 depending on what I'm going for. As you can see, if I move this up and down, we get very blurred versus overly sharp. So I just wanted to add a little bit of sharpness. 0.48, I don't know if you can see this before, after. There's just that little, little extra bit of sharpness, which brings out a little bit of that detail, and I think it looks pretty good. On to the next node, and this is going to be our glow node. And I really like the glow. It's really fun. It's a great effect to have on a lot of shots, and I put it on almost every node tree I ever do, just because I like the look it gives. So what we're going to do here we're going to zoom back out and see how it's going to affect everything. And then we're going to change the parameters here. So the first thing I'm going to do is hit alpha limits effect. And then I'm just going to bring this all the way down so I can see what I'm doing. And then we're going to change the spread a little bit higher, maybe like five, eight, seven. Yeah, that looks good. And then I'm just going to kind of see what needs to happen here. So if I move the gain up and down, I'm going to bring gain up to 0.5. 569 looks good. And I'm going to do a composite type of soft light just because I think that looks really good. So that's where the magic happens. If we put it on, then off. We're not done here yet, but I still want to dial in a couple things. So we're going to go color filter and I'm going to bring this to a nice cooler blue, maybe more cyan. Yeah, something like that. I'm going to hit OK. So right now, it's obviously a very exaggerated effect. We don't want alien blue skin going on. So what I'm going to do is opacity. I'm just going to bring this down and then I'm going to slowly bring it up to my desired effect. So if we bring it all the way down to zero, I'm just going to bring it up in opacity to see what looks good. And I think that's too much. So I'm going to bring that back down to around 0 0.27, 0 0.3. I think that looks pretty good. And if we do it before and then after, again, it's just these subtle, subtle changes that's kind of bringing out more of that coolness in the skin tones and the overall image. So if I do before and then after, it's just that little extra bit that's showing up in the whites and the midtones that's adding that cooler effect. On to the next node, and this is just going to be a nice little vignette. It's going to vignette the edges so we have them darker, and it's going to bring focus and attention to the main subject of our image right here. So what I'm going to do is come down to our little masking tab here and go for the circular one, and I'm just going to bring this out as I see fit. I'm going to zoom out of our image here, and I'm just going to reshape this to kind of look good. I'm going to make sure it's feathered pretty nicely. I'm just going to make it a little bit bigger and skinnier and just kind of make sure that it is covering 
our model here. So as long as I get that in place, I'm going to then hit this button right here, down here, which is going to invert this. And you can see here, if I just bring that down, what that is actually doing. So that's where our vignette is. So I should probably honestly kind of replace this to be a little bit wider, just to make sure that our entire subject is covered. Maybe feather it a little bit more. And that is looking pretty good to me. Now that we know where our thing is going to be headed, I'm just gonna reset this and I'm gonna bring this a little lower. So we have a nice little vignette here. And then the other fun thing that I like to do is right click here and then do add node, add outside. And what it's going to do is affect the opposite part of our vignette. So as we saw on the previous node, we're affecting the edges, whereas on this one, we are affecting the inside part. So obviously, I want to just add a little bit of a extra emphasis on our center part. So now if I turn this one off, you can see what a difference that makes. We have a lot more emphasis on our subject. So if I go before, after, that might be a little bit too bright. I'm just gonna reset this and go even softer on the brightness. And I might actually bring down the brightness on this one because we have such a dark image that this vignette is having a really, really big effect. So I just wanna kind of make sure that the image is not too obviously vignetted. And I think that looks pretty good. I'm really happy with how this day to night color grade turned out. I think it is really believable, really realistic. And honestly, the best thing about this is that because it was shot in daylight, our ISO looks really, really good. So that means that there is no noise. It's super clean. There is no none of that bad stuff that comes associated with shooting in low light. It looks like we were shooting at nighttime. It's very convincing to your audience that we shot at nighttime. But what it actually means is that you have a super clean, good looking image that you don't need to make any sacrifices for. And once you're happy with that color grade, what we can do is go to clips. And then this was shot in the exact same kind of setting. So what I'm gonna do is right click and then I'm going to hit apply grade. So when you have a scene that was shot in the same kind of lighting situation, you can apply the same grade to multiple clips. And now you have a very similar looking thing. What you might want to do is a little bit of adjustment here. I think we're a little bit dark here. So I'm just going to kind of make sure that the brightness is higher on our little vignette. Boom, we bring out the eyes a little bit more. And I think that I might do a little bit of overall bringing up of exposure on this one just because it's a little bit darker. So I think that looks pretty good though. And what did that take? 10 seconds because we put in all the work on this one. Now all of our other clips don't need to have that same amount of tedious work done to them. And that's how I color grade to make something look like it was shot at night, even though it wasn't. And if we look at the before and after, it is quite literally day and night. And I think it's so cool that I get to use that and it's actually relevant. If you do like this color grade, I am going to be selling it on my website. You get both the LUT as well as the DaVinci node tree. So you have full customizable access to your heart's content if that's something you're interested in. Otherwise, if you liked this video, please leave a comment, like the video and subscribe if you found it helpful. My name is Mark Steiner and I'll see you next time.